Oh my gosh. Don't, don't guess it. Don't guess it. You'll blow it. <laughs> no. Okay. Fine. 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 It's Billie Eilish. Shut up. <laughs> Pete Holmes. <laughs> Today's podcast is brought to you by ShipStation. Use my code NASH and get your first two months free at ShipStation.com. Guys, what's up? We're in the Allo Studios. Hello. Welcome to All Good Things. This is uh, our podcast, of course, you know, and our guest today is the one and only Pete Holmes. There are others. Tell there's me a, the other Pete Holmes. There's a drummer named Pete Holmes. Who does he play for? I don't know. But every once in a while, I'll, I'll, our paths will cross and I'll see that there's like a heavy metal drummer. He must be badass. He must be so pissed that there's like this soft, like kind of sweet comedian and he's like really ripping ass on the drums and I'm like, hey, you ever see a bubble that looks like Mickey Mouse? And he's like, fuck that guy. But yes, happy to be here. Thanks for having me. That is what you just did is your comedy. That is it. That is your comedy. That was it. You take, you take Uncool P and you put him up against Coolness. everything else and it's it, it kills. Oh, I, it's a, I sometimes like the show. You came and saw me at Largo. My Val right. was there, and she was like, "Wow, that set was filthy." And I was like, <laughs> "You're right." She was like, "You were filthy." She wasn't even oh, saying. I it don't remember that. that. I saw I, really? I saw Pete Thursday night at Largo in Los Angeles. It's the best comedy venue in Los Angeles. A lot of people don't know about it. Actually, yeah, that's true. A lot of people don't know about it. But go see. Uh, it, it, we do a monthly show there. Yeah, called Pete Holmes Living at Largo. So Largo LA dot com. Once a month. Oh, okay, guys. We have a quick surprise. Oh no! This happens now. Shut the door. Shut it. Shut it. Okay, guys. We have a quick surprise. Matt King, who you know from my videos, uh, he is here, and his Pete. I'm not kidding. Uh, this guy is insane for you. <laughs> have you surprised fans before? No, like this? no, okay, no. We're gonna do old old style YouTube. I'm, I'm only. I'm curious, like how this is gonna work. This is a, this, be is, like, this is an old fashioned YouTube. Oh, bit. who cares? <laughs> <laughs> that guy he is gonna uh come in and we're gonna surprise you can be blindfolded okay i'm gonna say matt do you know who this is and he'll say yes he'll recognize my voice and then you say matt do you know who this is okay we'll see if you recognize okay it's gonna be interesting if he doesn't recognize <laughs> if, it, who if, it doesn't, if it doesn't work you're gonna hate me <laughs> no it'll be great either way <laughs> yeah yeah you're good you're good it's a microphone okay matt is matt on camera Okay. Am I, wait, am I allowed to look yet? Not yet, not yet. Matt, you know who this is. I know, y yes, you, Jason, how are you? <laughs> it's so good you to see you. You didn't show up to JC's party last night. No, I didn't, because I was getting ready for this uh, today, which was a well, really big day for me, because it's, it's somebody that I really love and respect. So I spent all last night um, researching this person, and, and, and you're a big fan, and you want to say hello? Wait, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Oh my gosh. Don't, don't guess it. Don't guess it. You'll blow it. <laughs> no, okay, fine, fine, fine. It's Billy Eilish. Shut up! <laughs> Pete Holmes! <laughs> Hello. How are you? You know how long I've waited for this moment? <laughs> And I had this moment right when I was sitting here, I was gonna guess it was Pete. You were, I, this whole time I was like, he doesn't care. <laughs> I mean, no, he does. <laughs> right, you take uh, what? I had a feeling, I was even gonna say it in the car. <sighs> Whoa. He's, he's shaking, he's trembling. Because this is, re this is real, you this is, really nice. thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you like, a, a, for everything like oh, i have yeah. listened to you f since i was in college and like i wouldn't like i wouldn't have like the career i have today if it oh, wasn't for wow, you man. what is your career it's <laughs> <laughs> a really great question Did i know is that why everyone's laughing <laughs> no no Are you, you wouldn't know uh, i have uh three podcasts that i do okay yeah yeah no, i'm sorry i didn't know no yeah. it's all good but like <laughs> you who i have been listening to um for forever um yeah i have three podcasts <laughs> whose podcast is this what it's are we on jason's podcast <laughs> i didn't know jason had a podcast <laughs> yeah i'm quite in the dark how sweet lady val doing she's great <laughs> she's fantastic that's pizza i read I'm your so i should have brought your book i wanted you to sign it yeah i would yeah. i'll happily sign it <sighs> 
That's, you read my book too? Yeah, Comedy yeah. Sex God. Okay, even says it properly. <laughs> I even um, Pete, what's it like to meet a, a crazy fan? It's a weirdo. <laughs> no, <laughs> what's honestly, happening? What, what's going through your mind? Because I've met people that I, I'll say it. Man, people have met me and been very excited, and it, it's a nice feeling, right? Or is it too much for you? you? Know, no, you know what always goes through my mind is I'm like my 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 dad would really enjoy it. It's about decisiveness, Peter. <laughs> decisiveness, <laughs> decisiveness. Yeah, that is the story. My fa- you know, you talked about my okay, dad. Okay, I got myself a bottle of water. Okay, okay, okay. My okay. dad says okay after things he doesn't. This need is to my check favorite in. bit that Pete does, and I don't even know if it's a stand-up bit. I've only no, heard you it saw on, me the only time I did it. I, I, I know I heard it on a podcast. Oh, okay. And Pete does his dad in Boston, and he says okay, okay. You do it. Yeah. You do it. I, I understand. Uh, I got myself a chicken sandwich. Okay. <laughs> like, why are you? Are you attacking me right now? Like it's like the weirdest thing. Like to imp- imply you don't understand what I meant by a chicken sandwich. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, no one was questioning whether you got a bottle of but water. But then also, what Matt was referencing was that he will ask. A lot of dads do this. He'll ask a question and he doesn't actually want to know your answer. Right. Right. He's just going, "What's the most important quality of a director?" <laughs> Because he was asking me about Jeff Applebaum, which is what he calls Jed Apatow. And I go, I before I figured this out, I would give him like a long answer. I'd be like, I don't know, Dad. You know, they say the director is the best actor on the set. You know, you kind of have to pretend like everything's going well and talk for five minutes. He's going, I think it's decisive. <laughs> <laughs> and you're just like, oh, you wanted to tell me. My mom does this too. My mom just called and my daughter's about to turn four. And she was like, what would, what would Leela like for her birthday? I was like, she'd love a t-ball set. Yeah. Like, I know. Like, I, we saved something. We didn't get a t-ball. And she goes, don't be ridiculous. I'll get her some bedclothes. <laughs> <laughs> Which are sheets. Right. I didn't even know. <laughs> That's what old people called sheets. And she got her, I wish I had a picture of them, the scariest alien cat sheets. <laughs> My daughter will sleep on these sheets and have nightmares with these, like, Persian <laughs> cats, like, eating her soul. So I'm like, oh, you just wanted to tell me what you were going to get her. You don't actually want to know. Your dad is Peter Griffith and your mom sounds yeah. like Stewie. Is That's that actually true. Kind of yeah. true. Yeah. And I'm going to take over the rules. <laughs> my mom, my, Val and I just figured this out. You'll appreciate this, Matt, is we'll say like, uh, let's pretend I'm super excited to meet Jason. I'll be like, and mom, I met Jason Nash. It was, it was incredible. She'll go, it wasn't incredible. It was a dream come true. <laughs> like she'll correct you. <laughs> it wasn't incredible. It was remarkable. Like, why are you... <laughs> governing and marshalling my feelings how did that make you as a person like you do you look well look at what we do for a living we're kind of you too matt with your three podcasts you're always telling people how you feel yeah because and i'm not even saying you know i can sometimes give my parents a hard time i'm not even saying this in a bad way some families there just isn't a lot of room for your feelings Uh it's not bad or good it's just kind of what's going on a lot of mom feelings a lot of dad feelings so of course they turn into these randy dandy razzle dazzle boys that get together and talk into microphones <laughs> and they're like, and you know, I bought a payday bar and for some reason it made me feel lonely. And you know, we're, we're all like, yes, thank you. you know? And that's, it, that's why it is nice to meet Matt. But like when we do the podcasts and stuff, we don't really look at the numbers and, and we, I, I'm, I'm not on social and stuff. No, I know. So like when I meet somebody, this is the only time I really get to like. Yeah. You, know, you revined me, me. Revine me one time. Back in the day. Back in the day. Oh, yeah, Matt, did, did it? He that? did. That's a synchronicity because I thought today, this was right out of my brain, I went, I don't miss Vine. I miss who I was when I was making Vine. Oh, that I like, know. It, it was just so platform. fun. It was just so simple. It was so simple. What was the Vine that I read? It was um, me singing Love on Top uh, in my car with my brother. And I'm like, I make all these like faces. Oh, that's that one. I, that was your biggest Yeah. Line. And you liked oh, yeah. and revined it. I remember that was like a really big moment. Yeah. And I actually think you did follow me too for like oh, a little fun. bit as well. See, best Pete Vine. What's your favorite oh, part yeah. about, what's your favorite part about Pete's podcast? Uh, okay. What I, I, I know what I would say. But go ahead. Um, Decisiveness. <laughs> <laughs> I love how like present you are with your guests. Oh, thanks, you man. make people feel really, really welcome yeah. and really, really heard and understood. And you are such a great man with a uh you came from like a really strong sense of faith, but your connection with like spirituality and um and just how seeing you like uh also being a really great father too. Oh. Um 
and sharing your whole experience with that and also being a really great lover because you know you've <laughs> had a divorce you found Val and your relationship is really oh, strong with her thanks, this man. is so fucking crazy that this is happening right now to the point where you like I'm kind of me. of I'm, course you like me I'm like you you're yeah, like me yeah I, I'm not yes. saying you're I'm not saying you're biting me I'm saying we're similar guys yeah yeah you're like, I'm just That's what <laughs> I know <laughs> but like I'm, a, I, I'm kind of angry about this yeah. like I Mike I'm, said you might be angry because like I because I always said like I can't wait for the day I meet Pete Holmes. Uh, and the thing is, like, I want us to like be friends. Like, yeah, I can't. Yeah, yeah. This isn't like He's busy, Matt. He's yeah, busy. I know. He's He's very busy. This is like when I talk I'm to in a suit <laughs> right now. You look great. I don't have my bow tie on. I was worried about the bow tie. Is a bow tie a thing? Uh, well, I ha I'm going to the Emmys. <gasps> Are those today? Yeah, they're today. Why aren't oh, you there? I don't know. Why would they have the Emmys on a Tuesday? <laughs> well, yesterday was 9/11. Oh, oh. yeah, I think that's why. The 9/11. <laughs> oh, 2020. <laughs> <laughs> Phew. A guy so dumb. <laughs> I thought that was yesterday. I've been that, that's a dark, dark area. But the guy who doesn't do time. I don't do time. Pete, you didn't hear? Yeah. You didn't hear what happened yesterday in New York? I thought that was yesterday. <laughs> yeah. That was how long ago was it now? <laughs> 20, Twenty years. Twenty years. Twenty two. All right, so it was nine eleven, so they didn't do the Emmys and now they're gonna, gonna do the Emmys and you're gonna go. Yeah, I found As out breath? yesterday. No, I'm just going uh I'm going to Zane's plus one, my roommate. Why is Zane going? Jeremy Lewis invited us. Or he invited him and Zane had a plus one. Like, and I also think it's because of heat. Like Dude, rosacea, man. Yeah. You, oh, is it rosacea? Do yeah. I have rosacea? Because mine do the same thing. Yeah. I will, It usually happens like if I'm... I used to get it a lot when I did competitive speech like in high school. If I had to perform for like a lot of people and stuff. Yeah, I did like oral yeah. interp. Well, uh, great, great radio voice. I'm enjoying it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Stop. What do you think about his stand-up? Have you seen... You know, I yes, up. I saw you at the Gramercy Theater in New York oh, with Judd no Apatow. Way. Yes, yeah. and then I've always wanted to go to the Largo when you've had when yeah. um you've had a show, but I haven't been able. to. I went to. Thursday night. Well, you're you well. did. Yeah, I was gonna invite you, but it would have blown this. <sighs> Were you on the old guest list, Matty boy? Don't worry about it. Oh, there's an offer. Really? VIP. There's no VIP. <laughs> oh, it's good uh, to pay. Just, I feel like it's, this is it. crazy don't that this it. is happening right now because I'm like trying to be as fully present as I can be, sure. and I don't geek out like no, this. Not hardly ever. No. no. I, I hear you down the hall and you go, they have Coca-Cola? <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it, they have Coke. There's actually two Cokes, Diet Coke, Fanta. Just everything is great. No, Pete, this is really, really cool. Yeah. How much time has passed? Where, what time is it? It's 15.15. 15. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! Let's. Why don't you? Why don't you? Oh, when was the me. last time you laughed the hardest? Oh, good question. Wow. That's always the final question. Now of this I podcast. feel like the pressure that that puts on. No, Val and I, we laugh a lot, and whenever we do, I go like, "This would be my answer." But now I, I'm not blanking as much as I'm uh, blanking. The hardest. <laughs> <laughs> the hardest. No, but Val and I, at the end of the night, like tonight. I'll go and we'll we'll watch an episode of The Office or some bullshit. It's really just an excuse to hang out and we yeah. pause it and we talk and we yeah. do bits and stuff. But Val, like one of the greatest joys of my life <laughs> is that Val still <laughs> finds me very funny. My first wife didn't find me funny. Yeah. <laughs> and she thinks it's I'm funny. Show. But not just funny. Yeah. You've heard me say this before. She likes that I'm silly. So like this morning I was singing going like, look at our beautiful heart and like singing but I was really playing with the difference between the falsetto and your whatever your regular voice is uh -huh. and, like, ah, and like she was laughing and then that makes me laugh so we're laughing all the time it's not a great answer but you know my, my regular answer is in the Bowery Hotel when I made I said I came out of the bathroom and I said and my pants were at my ankles I had my boxers on and I went do something that's never been done and I started to kind of walk <laughs> silly but then I hit my head on the lamp and I spun and fell which I wasn't planning on doing any of that like I tripped on my own pants and then Val laughed so hard that she farted which as you know so many of the best stories are oh, yeah, yeah. someone farts by accident like she she was just <laughs> and I'm like and then I die but it was it all started from this like earnest almost like garden state like let's just do something in the moment and then I <laughs> fell and the universe was like make somebody for it make somebody for it yeah, yeah that's that's my go to I had, some, I had something similar we, I was doing acid once with my friend uh -huh. and we were in college and he he was eating a banana and we're and he was like oh what if I 
you know, I'm going to throw this on the floor, you know, like yeah. all funny. And he did throw it on the floor. And then he did slip on the banana. <laughs> like he, it, 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 bananas, on are, they LSD. actually are slippy. Uh, they actually, yeah, are, they slippery. are slippery. They right. actually are. Like it's a, it's a trope. It from, starts from somewhere. Yeah. It's a, it's a trope from like uh, cartoons and stuff. Yeah. But no, he went down. <laughs> and I fucking laughed for 10 minutes. Did he go, whoa, <laughs> as he slid for a yeah. while? The yeah. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Mulaney used to have a joke. He never did it, but he was, it, it was something he would say in life. He goes, people say I'm a cliche. It's because I shower like this. <laughs> he never did it. I was always trying to get him to do it. He did it once and it did very badly. Uh, <laughs> it did very, did. very poorly. It didn't yeah, yeah. work. It worked, but like there's certain things that are just funnier over coffee. It, it's <laughs> it's cool that you, Kamal, John Mulaney, and Mike Birbiglia, there's probably more, all kind of came up together and all got massively successful, right? Is, is everybody right on that? I think, I am I would consider Birbiglia in my class, but he broke a little bit before any of the other people on that list. Oh, he did. When I met oh, Birbiglia, right. I thought like, I was like, oh, Mike, Mike Birbiglia, you know, like it was a big deal. And now, yeah, I suppose that's true. And and that Mulaney's like a different thing though. I actually haven't talked to Mulaney in a very long time. I met Mike Birbiglia and I was on shrooms. <laughs> you were not. <laughs> yes, I was. I was we were at the um Outside Lands Music oh, Festival and like there it. was the the comedy section and Cody Co and Noel yeah. were performing yeah. and Mike Birbiglia was hosting and we got to go backstage and I'm like wait Mike Birbiglia is here we saw his trailer with his name on it I'm like he's around but I'm like oh no I'm on shrooms and I did a cutting of his uh his book sleepwalk with me when I was in college so like I knew the book like what's the back a, of my what's hand a cutting a cutting meaning like you cut a piece of literature down to 10 minutes and ah. you perform it ah. you're kind of like doing someone else's stuff but it's yeah. performance have you heard that term? No. And I met Mike Birbigley on shrooms. You shouldn't be on, on mushrooms. I didn't tell him though. <laughs> I was trying to keep my cool. Um, but I think I did keep my cool. You he were... followed me on Instagram after, which was pretty cool. And what cool. happened when you met him on shrooms? What did you say? Um, I was like, how's Dr. Dement doing? And he was like, Dr. Dement, like, which was like the sleep doctor in his book oh. that he would like quote and like recite and learn about sleepwalking from. And he was like really wow. impressed that like I- also the I, guy I, that broke Weird Al. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Dr. Demento. Uh, crazy, wild. So tell me what else, what is the name of your podcast? Hoot and a Half. <laughs> <laughs> Hoot and a Half with Matt King. And Mike Sheffer is my co-host, or yes. Yeah. And um, and up. then we have Unfiltered, which is Zane and Heath Unfiltered, but it's the four of us, me, Mariah, Zane, and Heath. And then we have Good Influences, which is me, Mike, Carly, and Aaron. Wait, you really have three podcasts? Three podcasts. Wow. I love doing it. Love to chat. He loves to chat. I can't care. believe this is happening, though. I feel care. really off- like caught off guard. Well, you were literally brought in here blindfolded. <laughs> the elevator, yeah, the it, holding his hands through the lobby. It was like, don't stop was. until you feel Pete, water. Pete, I I was uh, about five years ago. I was like completely broke, and I was performing at the Improv uh -huh. in the little room. And this guy came in, and he was in the audience. And after I got off stage, he's like, "Do you want to come do YouTube with me?" So I didn't have any other options. You asked me, you know, how yeah. I ended up here, and then Matt. And I don't know, what is there, like 10 of us? Yeah. There's probably another eight or nine friends. Who, and these guys are all in their 20s. So I just completely shifted careers. And I this is only doing, five years ago? Yeah. Really? And it was really weird. And then it took off and I started to be able to pay my bills, which was great. Yeah. And then that's how I know Matt. Google and I, AdSense. Like, yeah. Your YouTube channel is popping off. I just, I actually have an email to myself. I was like, ask Jason about YouTube. Yeah. Because like, for example, we want to do new Batman videos. Yes. I don't know if this is interesting to people, but it's like, we found a company that would front some of the money, which was incredible. And then the budget was like double that. And I was like, let's just say I'm being asked to pay way more than I wanted to pay out of pocket on like a gamble on like making, you know, the videos we did like, like your, uh, your homeboy shirt here, street fighter. We did like street fighter videos, like just guys sitting across from each other. Mm -hmm. I think that'd be cheap, but for some reason, everything costs a ton if you want it to look great. So I was like, I got to ask Jason how much we might make. I know you must get this yeah, all the time. I can tell you right now, it's uh, a million views is ten thousand dollars. Between five and ten, depending on the season. But then, if you get a sponsor, yeah, if you have a sponsor, so let's say you do five Batman videos and uh, you can get 
ten thousand dollars an episode like yeah. as like it's brought to you by dr squatch or whatever and how do you do that you go to a brand you can talk to jess or ferris or you go to a brand person and you orchestrate a rate okay and they kind of can know like how how the video is going to do uh-huh and then yeah and that's how you make the money and will they front you that money or they wait until they air no they'll pay you uh, they'll pay you like fifty thousand dollars for five episodes, and you can do it in in each episode. You're like episode but, one. But they will give it to you up top. Depends. Uh, yeah. No. No. You get paid. At, you get paid after, right? Yeah. It's usually like net thirty or like net sixty after it goes live, but it's in the contract. They'll pay you. And so I you're usually not going to get stiffed by. Like, I can. I can connect. Jack you. Link's beef jerky. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. yeah. I can connect you with. Um, That'd be huge because some I, some people that do just that. We just want to make these things, yeah. And like the word prohibitively, the phrase prohibitively expensive is has been used so many times this month by me and my friends. We're just like, we can't do this. But like, I didn't know as an investment because we're speaking frankly. I was like, I'm being asked to give like twelve thousand dollars, and I was like, but to make six videos, and each one should make about a million. I mean, it, yep. that, that's conservative. Mm -hmm. So you should make your money back. Yeah. But I don't, I don't, I read that Bernie Brillstein book and remember he lost his shirt on the Ryan O'Neill. Uh, uh, well, $12,000, that's a fucking crazy <laughs> amount of money. Go on, Bernie Brillstein. I don't know. I don't like putting my own money into anything anymore. That's what I'm saying. I don't want to do I don't do think it it's either. good. Jason, I have to go. You gotta go. I have to go because I'm going to miss my ride Say to it. the Emmys. Say, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you did <laughs> it. To the Emmys, guys. I have to go to the Emmys. <sighs> this was your Emmy. Thank you. Now you're going to. For have... doing this. Thank this you. This is like, I've asked you always about Pete Holmes, like, yeah. since uh -huh. I've known you. I'm like, do you know him? Him? Hmm. Do you guys must go way back? I never said that I did. Well, I'm meeting you I just, today. You guys are from like you know Massachusetts, and yeah, um, catch just a fan, really. This was really great. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm so sweaty. Uh, can I see how tall you are? Because like I'm pretty tall, but I want to like. Sure. Wow. <laughs> wow. And Matt's wow. tall. I'm quite a bit. I'm quite a bit taller. <laughs> I have to say it. I'm taller. <laughs> bye bye, buddy. Nice bye. Thank you. Nice to meet you too, Matt. Have fun. Wow. I guess it's narcissistic for me to worry that he wouldn't know who I, you know what I mean? There is a concern. We all like I saw Billie Eilish do that on Ellen or something yeah. and you could just tell that even Billie Eilish was kind of like, what if they don't, Yeah. what if they don't care? Yeah. You know we, what I mean? We've done full, full surprises like that. We've waited in closets to surprise people <laughs> um, and we popped out of the closet and the two girls were like, oh, hey. We did this one video once where we were giving away like five hundred thousand dollars over COVID. So we'll make a few Batman videos. <laughs> <laughs> and we were riding around uh, all over Southern California, and we couldn't touch people. So we would take a T-shirt gun with a check inside, and it would be like a ten thousand dollar check, twenty thousand dollar check, and they would come out of their house and they'd be like, "Stay there, stay there," and we go like that, and then they would get the check, and then sometimes people there it's not that they're not appreciative yeah they're just not they're in shock they don't get it in the moment or they don't want to be pranked or, you right know what i mean there's right. a million things going on today's podcast is brought to you by ship station yes shipstation.com new sponsor here thank you ship station for coming on board guys let me tell you something do you want a business are you shipping things out from your house? Well, then I'm talking to you because ShipStation is the best. ShipStation sets you up for growth by directly integrating your products into every shopping cart and every storefront. So your products are easier to manage, easier to find, and easier to get in the hands of happy customers. So you got a little business out there, maybe you're sending out t-shirts or clothes or whatever, and you're sending it all from your home, well, ShipStation does it right. They're the one stop for every small business out there. And guys, yes, I'm very smart. I'm gonna tell you something right now. It's October, right? What comes after October? November. What comes after November? December. Christmas, the biggest shopping month of the year. Guys, don't be left behind. Go to ShipStation right now and sign up so your orders are ready, so they can go out to people on time and so you can make money and so we can continue to live life and not get evicted from our homes. Guys, I signed up for my ShipStation account last week and we're gonna be utilizing it to send you all the merch that you guys love, that no one has bought. I mean, listen, go out there and get it, guys. Go crush it, you know? If, if you have a business, you're already whacked out. Do you know what I mean? If you said to yourself, I'm going to quit my nine to five and I'm going to start selling t-shirts or I'm going to start selling my paintings, there's already something wrong with you, but in a good way. All right. That means you're like me. That means you're like, I don't want to work for the man. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to do it myself. I don't want a boss. That's like Jess over here. She wants to quit every day. She hates her life. 
because she's got to work for me. And I'm not talking to Jess right now. I'm talking to you guys out there. The people with businesses that need shipping and need it done right. You guys are already pretty kooky. All right. That's why you watch this podcast and that's why you watch me. So instead of Nash Nation, let's call it Kooky Nation. All right. We're a couple, we're a bunch of kooks, right? I started this podcast. You thought it would be cool to design hats with your friend. Maybe it's going well, maybe it's not. But either way, you've got to get the product to people so you can go like this. Boom, 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 boom. I mean, if that's not an inspiring talk right there, I don't know what you want from me because I mean it. I want you guys to succeed. Whether you're starting small or scaling up, ShipStation makes ship happen. They wrote that and I delivered it geniusly. That's true though. Ship happens and you need to happen. Your business needs to happen. That's why you need ShipStation. Don't make me take off my shirt and show you my 50 year old withered body. And that's it. I'm done. No more on ShipStation. I lied. I'm not done. I'm going to keep going because you know why? Let me tell you something. You can easily compare shipping rates on ShipStation. So you know where to go, what's going to be the cheapest, and that's going to save you more money. Thank you. You're welcome. Send me a Christmas card. Ship more and grow more with ShipStation. Go to ShipStation.com and use my code NASH for a free 60-day trial. Start today and get set up before the biggest shipping season of the year. That's two months free. Visit ShipStation.com, click the microphone at the top, and use my code NASH. You have the stand-up bit where you go, um, you're talking about how long will you last on an island with Ryan Gosling? Yeah, 28, 28 days. days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then you do You're like gonna a... fuck him. <laughs> or he's gonna, you know, we'll see. But you're gonna. Yeah. I, I find sexuality very interesting. And especially like, have you ever considered that if we grew up in ancient Greece, would all be bisexual? Like, like yeah. there is a cultural consideration, you know? Yes. Like I've, I've said this a million times, but if like, all of your major sports heroes were like went both ways. Yeah, like you, there would just be so many more bi and gay people. So there is something kind of cultural. Go- like if your dad was like, and of course I suck some dicks. You know what I mean? Like say on his knee, and was like that's a great thing to do. Yeah. Like where where is the line? And that's what that joke is about. Is like obviously Ryan Gosling is is a dish. He's a dish. Mm-hmm. He's gorgeous. So if I I say I'm straight, but if I was stuck on a desert island with Ryan Gosling, it's a matter of time. And that's what I mean when I say it's a spectrum. I would wait 28 days, which is pretty straight. Yeah, that's pretty. Some straight. people blow them as the plane is going down. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. but I would wait 28 days. Rescue isn't coming. We've had time to build up rapport. I think I'd go. <laughs> si- I think I'd go six months. Six months. Yeah, because unlocking that side of myself on an island jason is scary you're thinking you have wi-fi <laughs> you're thinking you're like watching movies and eating coconuts there's nothing going on there's nothing he keeps do. bending over in front of you <laughs> you're like like i was looking at my friend's butt the other day a guy friend and i was like it's weird and and it was nice it was yeah. a nice butt yeah and i was like it's funny that like i look at your butt and i go nice and then i look up and i see your beard and i'm like gross <laughs> You know what I mean? But like, I don't know. I, 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 I'm honest about my sexuality. It's not for me. Right. But it's not because I think it's disgusting. No, I don't think it's disgusting. I, know, I, I don't hear you saying that. Either. I was on a plane coming back from Boston to see my mom. And yeah. I, I sat next to a gay gentleman. And we talked the entire time. And, and this was before I hadn't met somebody. And I thought to myself, yeah. yeah this, this would work. This could work. People. You got to find your your people. You know? I tend to love. It's not even that flattering why I love women, but I love being received. There's something, and I don't just mean sexually, but I love the kind of enveloping, welcoming. Not all women have this, by the way. This is a yes. this is a stereotype or, or a generalization. But a lot of women, a lot of guys, tend to act like dicks. And dicks, what do dicks do? They impose. Yeah. They like lead into the room like. Hey, what's going I love the Yankees. You know what I mean? I just don't, that doesn't turn me on. Like yeah. Oakley's on the back of your head yeah. makes me go soft. But like girls, and, and this isn't the only thing Val does for me, but she does just physically calm me down. She welcomes me. She loves me. Guys are like, a lot of times we're one-upping each other. There's like competition. I, it's just not for me. I get it. 
if that's your thing. But I've also said the worst thing, if losing an erection is really embarrassing during sex, but imagine, imagine losing an erection in a room with someone who has an erection. <laughs> it's gotta be like the only, he's like, it's not that hard. It's not that hard. I want that gentle, soft, I like soft, gentle women. What What is your day to day like with your wife and your baby and? My wife, I, I've, I found a really good balance, I think when it comes to show business, because show business is a little bit like the ring of power, like Lord of the Rings. Like, it's beautiful. It, it has magic, it has power. It can open a lot of doors. We've got Maddie going to the Emmys and all this stuff. It's fun. Right. I am not disowning it. I, I really get some juice off of it. But I find that you need to balance it or you turn into a golem. You, like, there are a lot of people that become golems that like, if you're only ever thinking about yourself, mm -hmm. next thing you know, you're like, what is the Vernon perilous nice and girl? <laughs> so, 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 so. You know, you turn into that because that's what power does. Power corrupts. So you balance it with what's more powerless than sitting with your daughter and watching her rage or thrash that out. That is so profound, making... Pete. You said that so well. <laughs> oh, thanks, man. But, you know, making little lunches. And, and I, I dropped my daughter off at, at school today and I pushed her in the swing for like 30 minutes yep. before I could go. That's good. When when this thing that we do is left unregulated or un unbalanced is really a better way to put it. It can lead to For me for me, insanity. you know, when, when I when I started doing YouTube, um I did it for my kids, you know. Yeah. That was totally it. And I was like, oh, I, I need to have something solid. Yeah, it's, you know? it's why you succeed. It's part of why you succeed, and, I'm sure. and, and I dropped everything else. I, I made a couple movies. They didn't do well. And I was just like, I'm, and, and in, in some ways, it like, what you're saying is exactly what I did without knowing it. I was like, I, I it, it just simplified my life. I was like, I don't need you to do this for my kids right now. That's all I yeah. need to worry about. Well, I think the pandemic helped a lot of us. I know it was very difficult. One of the silver linings was that it helped a lot of people it sort of snapped us out of trances, certain trances. Like, yeah. what is being asked of you? Um, and what do you just imagine is being asked of you? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you think you're, you're playing this, like, relevance game that maybe isn't really being asked of you. Maybe it actually could be handled with a more delicate or finessed touch. Like, and you could actually restore some of that balance and maybe have, God forbid, an interest that doesn't bolster your ego or your image you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. and then that brings you back to some of that balance. i think that um that's reflected in your podcast because you'll have huge names yeah and then you'll have a cardinal on they're always my favorite and <laughs> you know you speak because of youtube i never used to check the the ratings but now i see the youtube numbers when i'm uploading something yeah. and i'm like wow father greg boyle one of the best <laughs> founder of homeboy industries one of the most interesting uh I don't know if you call it a charity or a nonprofit or whatever, but it's a gang rehabilitation center here in East LA. Uh -huh. One of the most brilliant people you'll ever meet. To me, totally starstruck when I met him, totally fed and nourished by that conversation. 7,000 views, yes. you know what I mean? And you're like, and I bring on Bogo the Boner Clown. And I'm <laughs> like, Bogo. oh, everybody loves Bogo the Boner. I don't really do that, but like, there is a part of me that's like, <laughs> I, I just wish there was a way to put on the thumbnail, like, seriously, guys, <laughs> you need to listen to this one. But I, I don't have a like a, a, a thumbnail of, of Father Greg being like, <laughs> and it says like, you won't believe what Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount or whatever, you know. Guys, thanks for watching the episode. Don't forget to go over and check out thenashnation.com. Uh, it's wonderful over there. You can get bonus footage. You can get early access to the podcasts. You'll get everything ad free. And it's all happening at thenashnation.com. Um, Pete Davis, who wrote a book called Committed, did the podcast. That was also like a lower, on YouTube, sure. the audio audience is more built in, but on YouTube, it really sky, skyrocketed. And I was like, this guy's writing a book that could literally change your relationship with reality, because he's, mm -hmm. he's pointing out how how like our lack of commitment to things, like we always just want to watch the next show or the next date, the next person is making us miserable. And there's a lot of neuroscience to that. People are like, next, <laughs> next, get Bogo the boner clown back, bring him back, man. But it's a reality. It's just, it's just a reality. Okay. We, we were sitting here before you came in and we were like, thinking about how do we make the episode that's up now more salacious. And it's just, it, it, I was I was with Howie Mandel to do his podcast oh, wow. and he asked me and he was like, what do you want to do? And I was like, oh, I would quit if I could. Yeah. <laughs> because it does, it bums me out. It's yeah. just like, I don't want to play that game of. I think that's good honesty though. Yeah, I think so A too. A lot of people would delude themselves and be like. 
I don't want to come in here and say, oh, Pete, who did you fuck? Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. Who did you, you know. Like, here, I'll give you the thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> we actually need that. <laughs> That's actually really good. Oh, wow, you're killing it. <laughs> you got it, Ferris? There's your clicks. <laughs> There's your clicks. Psych, I'm here to talk about Father Greg Boyle and Homeboy Industries. <laughs> can I Can I ask you about my 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 favorite comedian is, is Gary Shandling. Yeah. And you re-released that episode when he died. Mm -hmm. And just tell, can you just tell me a little bit? I, I never met him. Yeah, I don't really. Here I am going to just call him Gary. I mean, I I had the same reverence for him and and really enjoy enjoyed him. I was saying enjoy because honestly, there is a, an element to his work that you still just to get get to continue enjoying it even though he passed. The doc was unreal. The doc was incredible, and and what a testament to what a friendship can be. You know, for Judd yeah. to do that. I mean, there's no easy way to pour through all of that material and make a movie out of it. And, and it was really moving for me because uh, yeah. I was working on Crashing when Judd was making that movie. Um, yes. And so I got to see Judd heartbroken over his friend, but also editing and kind of it was part of his mourning process. Yeah. Um, but all I remember, I remember that looking in Gary's fridge and he had a lot of like fruits and watermelon. It was very sparse and he was like eating for some new health thing he was doing. And I also remember the time he came in and watched the pilot of Crashing, which was a big deal for me. And he was so gracious to just come and give notes. And there was a scene where I found my wife is cheating on me in the show and I like storm out and I was very kind of uh, vulnerable about that performance. I was like, is this good? Does anyone believe this? Yeah. It's kind of some of the first dramatic acting I had ever done. And Gary, after I went, I don't know, I'm getting the fuck out of here. And I left and Gary went, yep. And I was like, ah, ah you got, yeah. It was yeah. like getting an Emmy. Our friend yeah. Matt is at the Emmys. That was the Emmy that I won. <laughs> That's so, so But he was cool. so sweet. But you know, Gary and I had that in common. Like he wanted to find that balance. He's like you. He didn't necessarily just want to keep playing the like relevance game uh -huh. over and over and over and over and over. Do you over. think people get to a point where they've done it all and they can't do it anymore? I mean, I, I think so, but uh, more often you see people who have done it all and they can't stop doing it. I, I really think there's just like a, a neural groove developed that it's like, if you're not on set and if someone's not handing you your special boy coffee mm -hmm. and putting you in your special boy trailer with your special boy AC and your special boy fruit plate, like you vanish. It's like, mm -hmm. who are you? That becomes the new normal. Mm -hmm. What most people have is like maybe, and I'm not saying this in a condescending way. I have this where I live. The people at the grocery store know you and the people at the post office know you and my kids' parents and I mean my kids' friends' parents and I all, that's where you get your identity. It's from your community. Mm. But if you jack that up and now you're like, I need awards and I need projects and I, you literally need billboards. Mm -hmm. Like you, you're like, I used to be on that billboard. <laughs> I think you can get addicted to that. I was on a billboard once. It was the worst week of my life. Really? Yeah. Why? Just people from your past, they- They, they come, hate you up. They hate you. Yeah. And yeah, they, yeah. They, they're mad. And... Well, in LA, I imagine there's a good amount of, of jealousy. I, I got to, as I kind of look down my nose at this, but like I, I have a picture of me, my baby and Val. I don't even know where it is. It's on Sunset. It's right across the street from the- I think the Whiskey A Go Go is yeah. that place. You know, there's that really big mm -hmm. building and they put a billboard on the entire side of it. For CBS? This is for HBO. For HBO. But here's here's my billboard story. I forgot I had one. There was another billboard that HBO had and I was driving down Sunset and on my way home from crashing. And and like I said, I was getting like getting the electricity, getting the life from making stuff and having it continue to make stuff. And here it's the third season of Crashing and there's a billboard and I'm on it and I drove past it every day and you kind of go like, wow, you know, <laughs> that's kind of neat. I'm, I'm on a fucking billboard. Yeah. And then one day I'm driving home and it the show, I think the show had been canceled at this point and the billboard had been taken down it, overnight because I drove by the day before and it was me. And then the next day I drive by and it said T-Mobile, four free cell phones. <laughs> and I went, Pete, <gasps> never forget. You're just four free cell phones. Like you're just another, I, it's, I'm not putting it down and I'm grateful know, for the I opportunity know, to be it. four free cell phones. Go on. But you were four free cell phones. <laughs> yeah. You were, you were yeah. marketed yes. and sold to sell subscriptions. I'm not saying this with vitriol, 
don't take yourself too fucking seriously. Your four free fucking cell phones. Yeah. And those four free cell phones aren't going around going like, I'm on Sunset Boulevard. <laughs> and neither should you. You should yeah, go like, this yeah, is yeah. a great job and I'm grateful and it's a privilege. Yeah. But don't believe it. There are some people that that really believe it. And and if you believe it when they love you, you have to believe them when they hate you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I know yeah, that's yeah. not like a new idea. Peter Principato used to say that. Yeah. Do you know him? Do you remember him? He was like a manager From the in New manager, York. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. He's like, you know, your best review. Don't believe your don't read your best review. Don't read your worst review. Conan told me the same. I did a, a talk show with Conan. He's like, you'll do one and you think th that they're going to cancel you the next day. Like the whole world is going to say, Conan O'Brien doesn't have it. You'll yeah. do a show so bad yeah. that you're convinced that it's going to be the front page of the New York Times. Who's this bozo? No one notices. Next day, no one notices. Then he's like, you'll do a show so good. The guest stinks, but you find it. You crack him up. Murder, standing ovation. You swear the front page of the New York Times is going to be Conan is the king. No one notices. Yeah. And there's a liberation to that. I've certainly experienced that in my podcast. I'm not waiting for a big wave either way. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? And there's something kind of, it's not quite Daniel Day-Lewis cobbling <laughs> shoes, but there's something a little bit of taking a step back. Because you can you can torture yourself checking the ratings and I like that. Am I still in the top? Whatever. I like your approach. It's giving you longevity. I think so for sure. I mean, somebody could come in, I'm sure, and audit us. I, I mean, like if I asked somebody to audit us and be like, "Where are we winning? Where are we losing? How could we do better?" And maybe we should do that. Like as a business, we probably should do that. It would be like, but I don't want someone to tell me stop having Father Greg Boyle on. Yeah, it's like. No, you can eat my whole ass. Like those things. <laughs> like my favorite episodes are. No, Father Greg. Father Greg, hold on. Hold on, I have to <laughs> tell people. To, yeah, that's right. Bo, Bo, Bozo the idiot boner clown needs to come back for the third episode. So now we we do it both ways. And by the way, I like interviewing Bozo the internet bo boner clown as well. Yeah, yeah. You you're you're really good at um, seeing everybody. I appreciate that. Yeah. There there have just been a few where I'm like, oh. Not we lost you, but like you don't know your four free cell phones. And I'd much rather talk to somebody who's been broken. Not bad broken. Yeah. Good broken. Yes. And not to get too Jesus-y, but that that's the whole thing. The 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 grain of wheat. I'm not even I'm I not, wanna know about Jesus. Yeah, I'm Jewish, Jesus but thing. I'm happy if you wanna tell well, me about it. Are you still into religion or no? I'm I'm spiritual. I just don't want people to think this is like coming I, I wouldn't consider myself a Christian in any recognizable sense other than I love Jesus. <laughs> but he says the grain of wheat has to crack for it to produce the, the plant, right? Yeah. That's the whole thing. That's just that's just true. You needed to have that, like, the two movies aren't working. Yeah. Oh, my family, how am I gonna get this balance? Oh, go to YouTube. That that That's like a, a real world, not a spiritual necessarily application of like, we need to be broken. That's what crashing was about. Mm -hmm. Another title for crashing would have been falling upward, which is the title of one of my favorite Richard Rohr books. But it's like, it's all these things that we don't want to happen end up taking us where we need to go. Or as Joseph Campbell says, the treasure you seek is in the cave you're afraid to go. We don't want to be humiliated. We don't want to be broken. We don't want to lose. We don't want to be embarrassed. But it's all these four free cell phone moments that actually... Yeah expand yourself did, did you have a fourth season of three seasons is amazing yeah. crashing is great go watch it on hbo max uh wyatt and i watched it last night and it's Cute. It, but did you have a fourth season no oh you, you mean planned but like like in your mind you know this sounds false or i'm worried this is going to sound false but if we had done a fourth season of crashing and we did have it mapped out partially is that Pete would have gotten a talk show. That's the first thing that happened to me. Right, you had the Pete Holmes show I had on the Pete TBS. Holmes. So, yeah. but the reason why, and this is the part I'm worried sounds canned or not real. The reason I'm glad we didn't do a fourth season, one, it was very hard. It was not an easy show to make. It was a pleasure mm. and a privilege, and mm. I would have loved a fourth season. Mm. But there was a relief when I was like, okay, we don't have to do that again. Just kind of like a, oh, I can breathe for a second. But the fourth season would have been Pete getting a break. And as soon as Pete got a break, even though there would have been plenty of pitfalls mm -hmm. and mistakes, it wouldn't have been the same show. I like that we made three seasons of a show of a guy yeah. just trying to get in at a club. Yeah, well, I love that. I love that the, <laughs> the end of the series is... You can call in for spots. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's it. Micro achievement. Because that's what, I, which is, that's which, what as a is. As when I was trying to be a comedian... Yeah. That was huge. That's it. 
huge. So that made the show so authentic, even yeah. when Mulaney is, was in it and you had to navigate. There's an episode uh, of Crashing, you guys should watch, but it's... <laughs> John, it's the third season finale. I third think. season finale. The series finale. You go, they say, John Mulaney wants you to open. You get there. They don't want Pete Holmes. They wanted Ben Holmes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And you you really navigated that well. I mean, you like... Yeah, I mean, even so you cool. just saying so that do. reminds me of what it feels like doing stand-up for the first 10 years is there's just like a lot of humiliations, which I think is why maybe some comedians, once they their train comes in, they, they make up for it with like champagne and yeah. whatever, limos. I don't even know what they're doing, but- um, It makes you so much stronger though. It does. As any, and then as stronger than anyone. It makes you a better podcaster. It makes you a better I actor. completely agree. And I think certain skills like that are only uh, forged in intense fire. Here, here, I'll explain it like this. You know, I know you understand, but like, if you want to write, like a lot of people would like to be a writer, mm. um, the reason why a stand-up is going to progress in their writing way faster than somebody sitting down with a glass of wine and, you know, at night, like kind of staring at the moon <laughs> when I was a boy, you know, just like that, like yeah. kind of guessing how people might like it. Stand up, if you don't write this joke properly, and if you don't cut the fat away and get the word just right and make sure you're being understood, you're actually gonna experience physical pain. <laughs> you're gonna go up and you're gonna bomb and it's gonna hurt you. It's actually gonna be- Your stomach. Painful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your shoulders are gonna be sore afterwards. Cause all that, like you go on to protect your neck, you think you're, in, it's fight or flight. Yeah. So of course you eat shit, you work the next day. You have to. Uh -huh. Your body goes, you're not going to do that again, are you? And you go like, yeah, Thursday. And it goes, we have to write. It's like self-preservational creativity. Yeah. So if you're just like, even if you are just uh, not just writing, but if you just want to write movies or write books or whatever, it's it would be helpful to try stand-up just to see what it's like to get fear in the mix. David Sedaris, one of the best writers, reads everything to an That's audience. Right cuts it down and then he puts it in the book, right? I think that's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. It's like really And he's not a stand up, but he but may still, as well be. But he, yeah. But like imagine not just guessing where the laughs are or where the air stands still, you know, like everybody freezes because they're so on the like really put it to the test. That's that's what stand up is. And then once you're doing it a while, you have to kind of develop a new skill which is like even though that did badly, I know that's a good joke. Yeah. You know, and and that happens from time to time. I think everybody wants to know th about Judd Apatow, the way he makes things. Yeah. His style is unlike anyone else's. Uh-huh. And I mean just so many movies and Crashing is was great and and I I felt like um I just wanted to know, like... Decisiveness. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a great question. I, I'm assuming what you you want to know yeah. a little bit about how he works. Yeah, like crashing is is like um, funny people, basically. Yeah. I mean, it's an extension of it a little bit. I mean, but but yours is really well done because you, you put in... Uh, Seth Rogen was just like a guy trying to make it. I loved all like the Christian stuff, and that was like really yeah, and the stories. divorce too, and you, yeah, you and had, the divorce, and you had a real engine going in a movie. I think you, you all you need is it's Seth Rogen who's so likable, so he good. wants to make it. That's all we really need uh, for a show. We wanted to really pack it. And it's also what happened to me. But um, tell thing, everybody what happened to you. <laughs> <laughs> you mean really? Yeah. Oh, well, I want people to know. I like, got your, married. Your whole story when I was. I got married when I was 22. I went to a Christian college. I thought I was going to be a youth pastor. I'd like to dispel this. I was never a part of the Christian comedy circuit. That's still <laughs> people introduce me at TV tapings. Oh, oh, like, this was... guy was on a, that was on the show. That was just never on the show. A, I did perform in Christian markets and at my Christian college a couple of times, but I never did like the circuit. Okay. If there is, I think there is a circuit. Sure. There are certain people that like work the religious circuit. I never did that. Um, so I don't want to front as they say. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, okay, so I was going to be a pastor, a youth pastor. I went to Gordon College, which is a, a non-denominational Christian college in New England. 
I got married my senior year, like right after my senior year, I wanted to move to Chicago to do improv, but I, I was very codependent. I didn't know any of these terms at the time. I was very codependent, <laughs> also very scared. And I was 22 and I also didn't want to live in sin. That's a real thing. So yep. my, my girlfriend and I got married very unceremoniously. There was no engagement. There was no like, there was no ring. I was just like, well, I'm moving. It's almost like it's a little aspy. It's like uh, on the spectrum. I was like, well, I want to get married. Uh, I, I mean, I want to move to Chicago. We're dating. I don't want to break up. I asked my mom. She was like, you should marry her. I was like, okay. <laughs> Real insanity. Like, yes. True insanity. Yes. But it is what a lot of people do. Especially, you're 22. I think right. you and I both forget what it's like. Oh, to, no. To, I remember. Uh, I was a fucking idiot. I mean, I, I certainly... It was more of a guileless sort of like what could go wrong. I was a real golden boy. Nothing had really ever not gone, not just gone my way. I wasn't always like, I won the lottery. It wasn't like that. I, there were there was stress and stuff like teasing yeah. high school, junior high, all that sort of stuff. But I still felt like inherently sort of golden. Yeah. And I was like, if I'm going to move to Chicago and do comedy, I will be okay. Like that's going to work out. So I might as well, and this is a real key as to why I got divorced. I was like, I may as well get married because that'll take that off my plate. Like who yeah. you're going to be with. Yes. Like the least romantic gesture you could ever have. And I'm pretty sure I probably even said that like at parties. I was like, you know, get married. One less thing to think about. And <laughs> really, of course, a relationship, you have to continue to woo the person, continue to pursue Dude, them. I did the same thing. Really? I got married because I thought I was supposed to get married. A lot of people do. Yeah. People are currently planning those weddings right now. And you know what? Maybe they should do it because... I, I'm not here to tell you one way or the other, anybody listening, but like a bad marriage is maybe what you need. I needed it. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't, a, it wasn't a garbage marriage or anything, but like it was fine. We were friends. It was a friendship marriage. We were buddies. And I, my current wife and I are, are buddies too, but we're also, not to use the gross word, lovers, but we have like a, we have a, a much more romantic, a deeper romantic connection yeah. uh, than my first wife and I did. We were just buddies. I still have a, a wife that I'm is my best friend, but there's other dimensions to it. There's the co-parent, there's the sexual, there's all these things. Uh -huh. So it's a grown-up relationship. The first one was just, I'm scared of comedy, want to come with me? So yeah. she did, and then she ran out of interest in that. Uh -huh. And frankly, I think she wanted to demonstrate to her parents that you could leave a, a marriage, honestly. Like, I think there was sort of like a, I'll do what my parents couldn't do and I'll get divorced. I really think that was- And were you heartbroken? Yeah, it was, it was rough. So when I was 20, I got married at 22, 28, she had an affair. Yeah. Um, and she, but it wasn't just like a sex thing. It was like, she fell in love mm -hmm. and she, we, we had just moved upstate. So I was miserable. This is a, a long story, but anyway, she told me, and then like the show crashing, I really did get tripled down into my pursuit of comedy. And this is- Once she was gone. When she was gone, I realized all I had was comedy. And that was actually kind of good. Yeah. You know what I mean? I look mm -hmm. back and I'm like, if we had stuck together. When, when I was married the first time, for example, I would worry about getting SNL. Mm -hmm. I'd submit, I'd walk into 30 Rock, I'd hand in my little DVD of my impressions or whatever. And then I'd actually be nervous that I would get it because I knew if I got it, it would be a huge strain on the relationship. Yeah. And then once the relationship ended, which I didn't want it to end, but slowly I started to realize like, oh no, you're supposed to be, you're supposed to live a little bit like a hitman. Yeah. You're supposed to have like a gross apartment that you don't want to be at. So you book a lot of spots. What did Norm, what did Norm say? It's a, you're, if you're a stand-up, you're a drifter. Yeah, we're drifters. <laughs> and, and then it became good news if I got SNL. And, and I went out for things yeah. more earnestly. And I'm not saying, by the way, Nate Bargatze was married at the, around the same time I was, has stayed married. Yeah. I'm, I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm saying- You need the right person. Yeah, you certainly need the right person. Mm. And it probably isn't the person you agreed to marry because your mom said to in a Caldor parking lot. <laughs> um, but because the, the, the uh, marriage fell apart, I it's like I went through my 20s and my 30s. I was 28 when she left. And then I got to like, I dated a, a lovely woman, a, kind of a rebound. It was like four weeks after my wife and I split. Because again, deeply codependent. But I got to see what it was like to have a relationship and, you know, smoke cigarettes and get drunk and how, how much of all this nonsense. Were you still 
are you, were you actually that wide eyed as you portray in Crashing? It's a little bit more on the show, more but not show. much. So you were kind of like, oh man, yeah, I'm in New York eyed. and this is a sex shop and yes. a little bit, right? Yeah, I mean, a lot of that stuff was based on real things. Some of it was after I came out to LA. The relationship that of the girl that of the woman who took me to a sex shop was based on a real woman I dated when I came to LA who was just incredibly and I say this as a positive thing. She was like very comfortable with her sexuality. So would go to like sex shops and I was very uncomfortable with my sexuality. Yeah, 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 yeah. We went to a pet store to buy a leash. I, I'm freaking out <laughs> telling you this right now. Here's your thumbnail. <laughs> we bought a leash for what? <laughs> We never used it. I say that I'm proud of. I'm yeah. like, we never used it. Who like, would go on the leash? Like she, she, she would, would go on the leash. She would go on the leash. Yeah, I mean, we never did it though <laughs> never because I, I, she was just leagues ahead. People and are wild the way, in New York. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with leash if you want to nope. do that. But my, Nate, Jason, this is how I know I'm a comedian. Mm. I have a, I don't know if kinky is still a okay word, but I'm meaning it in a good way. I have like a kinky sex positive girlfriend. She takes me to a pet shop to buy a leash to put on her neck. My favorite part of that experience was improvising to the pet shop owner what kind of fake dog we had. Because <laughs> I did like a little improv scene. I was like, yeah, it's a, you know, he's probably like 30 pounds. That was my favorite part. Most guys would be like, oh, I get to have kinky leash sex. Yeah. I was like, I think I really convinced this guy at PetSmart that we had a dog. And did you see I made him laugh? Like that is how you know you're a comedian. I had a moment like that this morning, <laughs> a, a, a real life comedian moment. I went in, I, I got my coffee at Starbucks and I, I hadn't, um, it hadn't gone through, the order hadn't gone through. They said, oh, Jason, we don't see it. They see me, oh, let me put it through. And they go, well, I guess you just want to spend more time with us like that and and I go I go oh yeah yeah you know and I said uh I said I said well yeah you know I brought you guys all here I have something to tell you and that got a laugh right yeah, yeah. but I was it was too early in the morning yes and you I couldn't your coffee literally I couldn't finish what yeah. I wanted to say was sure I I'm going to become a dancer but I couldn't get it out so there was just this like awkward like four yeah. seconds where there was four people four baristas like <laughs> and then once I said it, it, I had missed the timing. It was over. No, I that, welcome to my life. That is me every day. Guys, I wanted to remind you to go sign up to my website, thenashnation.com. And when you become a member, you can be eligible to call into this show right here and talk to me. It's something that I'm really passionate about. I want to talk to you guys, and I would love to have you on the show. Uh, that's thenashnation.com. I... I did a very strong psychedelic and Ooh. it rewires your brain and there's the reintegration period afterwards. And it's literally like there's a there's a fresh powder, like snow on your brain. Yeah. So there are all the grooves and then this this experience gives you this new, like six inches of snow all over your brain. So the, the person who was leading the ceremony who it was a very well done. This wasn't just me at Bonnaroo. This I was know. like a proper thing. Mm -hmm. and it was awesome. And the reintegration was really important. And he was like, look, what you do in the next 90 days is going to be what gets grooved into your brain. Uh, so just be careful about what you want to do. If you've always wanted to get up and jog, do it now because your brain is sort of in a fluid state and you can, you can make new habits. And you can also break bad habits. I don't have a ton of bad habits. Um, one that I was curious about was coffee. Yeah. Was I was, again, beholden to something. Uh -huh. So I was like, I'm going to put this to the test. My brain is supposed to be, and I quit coffee like that. I had no problem. Uh, no withdrawals, because I really felt like kind of spacey, and then you start coming back to earth, and then you're like learning how to be yourself again. And I just didn't drink coffee, and I was totally fine. I'm not going to tell you that like I slept better and I worried less. I'm sure some of that is true. You're right. You, know, you have less of a stimulant in you, but it wasn't like earth shattering. Yeah. But here's the thing. I can't smoke pot all the time. It just, it, it just dulls my brain too much. Like I like it, yeah. but I can't do it all the time because what's going to happen is I'm going to do a stand up set. I'm going to blank. I'm going to forget the punchline or just whatever, get too scattered. Mm -hmm. So I can't do it. It, it fucks up my life too much. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't drink anymore. I don't eat meat. I oh don't really God. eat dairy. 
And now I'm going to not do coffee. So like I consciously was like, fuck this shit. <laughs> like literally fuck yeah, this live shit. Live a little. Live a, a little. little. And it's so benign. And you know what? Even on the, uh, I am mostly vegan, but even on that, sometimes I just eat a fucking cookie and I just shut the fuck up. <laughs> and it feels great. Yeah. I, I think me trying to be perfect and f cheating every once in a while uh -huh. is is the, actually the right balance than just being I am perfect. You know, like it's I nobody benefits. And you start to feel self righteous. Honestly, when I start to feel too on my like like say I don't eat meat and yeah. I start feeling a little on my high horse, I will go eat some chicken wings. And that sounds like bullshit, but I'd rather eat antibiotics and fucking mutated GMO <laughs> KFC than feel like I'm a better person than you. <laughs> really. Which is more toxic? Both are bad for your heart. One is your metaphorical heart. One's your literal. You really took it heart. somewhere I didn't know you were going. It's <laughs> really good. That's my job. <laughs> Can you do? Um, would you do two games? Yes. We'll cut them up for TikTok. Okay, this is Would You Rather with Pete Holmes. Here we go. Would you rather have telekinesis or tell uh, or telepathy? <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. Next question. That, no, I know. I think it's a good question, but I didn't know what it was. Telekinesis, you can move stuff. Right. Telepathy, you can read my mind. I don't want to read your mind. Great. Telekinesis. Jesus, that's crazy. <laughs> ah, I didn't know what you were doing. How'd you do that? We could only move it this much. I have the lamest You're like, telekinesis. Okay, at it. <laughs> Would you rather be forced to sing and dance uh, to every single song Oh, be forced to sing or dance to every single song you hear. <laughs> or? Oh, Either sing one. or dance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Be able to see 10 minutes into the future or 150 years into the future? Ooh, 150. Yeah? yeah. What would you see? Just Mordor. <laughs> <laughs> and I come back. This isn't so bad. Yeah. You should see where it's going. It's not Blade Runner. <laughs> Boy, Pete's a little off today. What's going on, man? I keep glimpsing 150 <laughs> in the future. It's bad. I saw a bird on fire land on a dog, okay? It was bad. Um, never be able to go out during the day or go out at night? Huh? Oh, uh, would I? I can't go out. Yeah, would you? Would you rather? Would you rather? Oh, I'd rather not be able to go out at night. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Always oh, have bo know. and not know it was. <laughs> always have bo and not know it, or always smell bo on everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> Jess, <laughs> that's a good one. Bo on everyone else. <laughs> bo isn't even that bad. We've just been told that it's bad. I know. I don't get grossed out by bo. Me, I, I, sorry like, to be fancy, but a valet <laughs> returned my car the other day. Yeah. And he had a lot of B.O., young guy. And I was like, he's pretty young to smell like a 70-year-old deli owner in Queens. Yeah. But he did. Yeah. It's also 106 out. That's why. Yeah. And I, we had, he was all right. <laughs> uh, have a pause or rewind button in your life. Ooh. <laughs> well, okay, I'm going to call bullshit on this question because if you have a rewind button, you can rewind just a little bit and that's a pause. <laughs> ah. <laughs> So I'm going to go, but I would pick rewind. Rewind. Wait, yeah. let me do it again. Pause. <laughs> I, I, I do rewind. I do rewind. Be forced to live the same day over and over again for a full year or take three years off your life. Well, I'd love to do the same day over and over for a year. I think that would be fun. Yeah. Especially it depends on which day. Is it the colonoscopy day? <laughs> Even if it is, you just don't go. You get the colonoscopy the first time you live it. Right. And then the rest of the time, you're just like, you don't go. And then you get to have the good feeling of skipping your colonoscopy. Yeah. You could imagine what you could do. Yeah. I think about that all the time. I, I'll have like a bad set and I'm like, if I could just do that again, imagine being able to just do it again yeah. and freak people out. If I was like, you need to call your dad back or what do you like freak people out? Yeah. He'd be a king. That'd be cool. You'd wake up and you'd always have food in the fridge. Yes. The same food. You wouldn't have to buy same food. Poop. You'd know this is going to be a good poop. Yeah. Or this is going to be a bad poop. You know, though. At least I knew. You know what I mean? Yeah. Especially if you know it's going to end, that's not a curse. Yeah, yeah. Give up your cell phone or bathing for a month. <laughs> I'd rather give up my cell phone. I'd love a reason to give up my phone for a month. Yeah? I'd be like, guys, it was either this or bathing. We already smelled the valet. We don't need me smelling like that. You know what I'm saying? 
<laughs> yeah, God, I hate my phone. Uh, run it at 100 miles per hour or fly at 20 miles per hour? Fly at 20. It's pretty slow. <laughs> it's like the Louis bit. That's so good. <laughs> really thoughtfully. If the subtitles were on, it would say, Jason, thoughtfully. It's pretty slow. It is pretty slow. You're I'm not getting go, anywhere. I'm going to go running. You're right. You've convinced you me. You can ride a bike at 20 miles an hour. It's like bike flying. Bike fly. You don't want a bike fly. No, you don't want that bike fly. I'd rather run 100. I'd rather, my daughter, she loves Sonic. I'd be like, all right, I'm about to Ben Schwartz this shit. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Uh, you know, I, I have a story to tell you, but I'll tell you later <laughs> about Sonic. <gasps> um, ha uh, have someone see all the photos in your phone or read all your texts? Uh, photos. Photos? Yeah. <laughs> Fame or fortune? <laughs> Just wrote this one. Fame or fortune? You want fortune? Fortune, want yeah, of course. Of course. Okay. All right, here we go. All right, this is a rapid fire. Well, some, a lot of people want fame. All right, this is rapid fire. This is, we're going to put a minute on the clock. We don't ever really put a minute on the clock, but we say that. And these are just quick questions. Hit Answer it. Quick. Weed or CBD? Ooh, <laughs> CBD. Fajitas or burritos? Fajitas. Uh, favorite porn search? <laughs> I usually, I type, <laughs> I like the words curvy. Can I'll say that curvy, oh, yeah, yeah, and then you yeah, go yeah, from yeah, there. Yeah, it's good, it's good. But I don't like these uh, hard body people. Best you made it weird guess. The gym. <laughs> Sorry, I'm still on the porn question. Uh, curvy's a good catch for for what, what I'm looking for. Gym? What is it? The gym. What am you I don't supposed like a, to? You like a fit body too? No. I think curvy's good too, though. Curvy only. But that's the beauty of porn, as you can you can have. I never, or... I never go like, let's see some abs. <laughs> Ooh, look at abs. <laughs> can see their stomach muscles. Get the yeah, fuck yeah. out of here. Yeah, yeah, all right. All right um, <laughs> but I completely understand if that's what other, well, if that's what billions of people are into. Uh, knocked up or this is 40? I prefer this is 40. Hot take. Yeah, I know. Mm, that's a hot take. It is a hot take. That's a hot take. Uh, well, yeah. I'm, 40. I'm 40. Yeah, yeah, when yeah, you, yeah. When yeah, you yeah. turn 40. When I turn 40, I'll You'll let you like know. It more. I'll call you the day I turn 40. <laughs> Pete, I'm at the Emmys. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> you're coming all over time. Uh, best you made it weird guest. Oh, yeah. Um, honestly, Maya Rudolph. She was so good. The, it might be the best. Good because you never get to see her. You never get to see her. And you know, I thought and about it afterwards. I was you. like, no, I've never seen her in something where she got to be that goofy. Yes. And I'd like... I'd Drifting. either like to write it or have someone else write something where she gets to be the goofy Maya. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's so good. Yeah. Uh, favorite Bible verse? <laughs> uh, it's I know it in Old English or, or King James, but it's lest ye be converted and become as little children, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Keep in mind the kingdom of heaven isn't uh, afterlife. It's it's right here and now. So we're, we're to become like little children. Oh my God, I'm sorry I asked because I can't follow it. <laughs> I'm not smart well, enough. Well, no, no, you do. It just means the the eternal present. You get it. You I'm going to go back and look at it. Shit. I know you got to go. Okay, uh, death row meal. Roscoe's chicken and waffles. Yeah, hell yeah. For sure. Okay, that's Pete Holmes, everybody. Thank you so much, <laughs> Pete. That was f fucking amazing. Thank you. Are you, oh God! Oh no! Who's yeah. this? Is this Ryan Gosling or no, is this Al Pacino? No, it's Phil. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, guys! Thank you so Thank much. You. Go check out Pete. Go check out Crashing. Oh, I'm, I'm yeah. on tour. Go to oh, Pete, go. PeteHolmes.com for tickets. I'm going to be in all sorts of cities. Go see him. I saw him the other night New at Largo. Jersey, fucking kills it. Portland, Seattle, North Carolina, all over. Good. PeteHolmes.com. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye, bye.